Welcome back to the channel, guys. Super excited about today's video because I'm starting to see a couple different nuances in the labor market that I think you need to know about. Right now, we're in an interesting transitionary time. Of course, over the last month and a half, we have started to see some turmoil and instability in the market. We've seen now some banks collapse. We've had to see some bailouts happen. And one of the pieces of the economy that I've been keeping a very close very, very tight eye on is the labor market. Today we're gonna to talk about two different parts of the labor market that I'm starting to see, maybe starting to have a little bit of instability. It's not a full out collapse or anything. Of course, as always guys, if you're new around here, click that subscribe button. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, comment those down below. And of course, click the like button if you wanna see more videos like this. I wanna show you guys the job openings report that came out this week. Um, this is a visual representation from 2019 all the way till now in 2023 of the JOLTS job openings report. Simply put, these are the jobs that are currently available and coming open. Um, and you guys can see, during COVID, we saw, of course, a decline. And then after COVID, stimulus came in, more and more money came in and more jobs became available. More jobs became available than ever before. Still, right now, we are extremely high in terms of normal times. In fact, if I were to walk over here to the computer and zoom out, take a look at where we are in comparison to where we normally are. Tons and tons of increasing over time, but we are still extremely high compared to normal. Now, zooming back in, this is the current time frame we are dealing with in terms of job openings. And notice right here, what I'm starting to see was a slowdown, a little bit of a pickup, and finally we saw pretty significant drop off. Our expectation was 10.49 million available jobs and we only came in at 9.93. Still a very high number, but what you're starting to see is job openings slow down. Now, I want you to think about all this in a circle. What is the first thing to lead an economy to go up or go down? It's us. We are the buyers. We are the consumers. We are the people spending the money. So if I'm going into Best Buy or Walmart, or some other superstore, I'm a consumer. The, the more positive I am in my bank account, the more confident I am in the economy, the more I'm willing to spend money. If I'm willing to spend money, then there needs to be more people. There needs to be more security. There needs to be more checkout clerks. There needs to be more stalkers, managers, etc. support, you name it. There needs to be more. However, what we're starting to see is consumers be a little bit more pessimistic about the economy. Consumers right now, 64% of them in the United States are living paycheck to paycheck. There are less money in savings accounts than ever before. We have the highest uh, utilization in terms of credit card in history. The consumer is not strong. And so what we're starting to see is maybe finally this lag time. The consumers are starting to get weaker. We're starting to see the consumers not spend as much money, not even use their credit cards. They're simply not purchasing the items they were purchasing. And so because of that, these businesses are saying, hey, we don't need those jobs anymore. So those job openings start to diminish. Now, this, in my opinion, is the first domino. But this is also something that the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell, chair of the Fed, is looking at very closely. The reason he's looking at this is he needs to see businesses starting to slow down. You know, think out to all sorts of businesses. I can think to restaurants and mom and pop stores. They all raised their, their prices over the last two years. And think about, do you really think they're going to reduce their prices? It's going to be really hard for them to do it unless they're absolutely forced to do it because demand drops. And so right now what they're not doing is necessarily all slashing their prices. Major markets like real estate and sometimes the car market and oil, etc. is of course dropping. But the small mom and pops, they're not slashing their prices. They're simply not hiring. This is the first domino that I'm currently seeing. Now the second thing I want to look at is right here which is on the bottom here. I'll actually scroll it up for you so you can see it. When we take a look at this, this is unemployment claims. Now, unemployment claims are completely different from job openings reports. Job openings reports are always the first reports to look at because that's gonna tell us how many jobs are available, are people hiring, and that's gonna give us a little bit of an indicator on whether or not people are gonna ultimately become unemployed. This is unemployment claims. Of course, as you guys know, back in COVID, you can see the spikes are much higher. We had massive, massive unemployment claims. People were getting paid more on unemployment than their jobs. We remember all of that all too well. 
came down, unemployment dropped because stimulus came in, more people went back to work. But now notice, do you see the anomaly here? We haven't seen numbers like this since way back here in mid-2022. We're starting to see a spike up. Now this video is not about the trend changing. This video is not about that I believe that everything is changing. It's none of that. In fact, it's basically a warning shot to Forex traders and stock traders to say, keep an eye on these, on these reports and these indicators over the next coming weeks and coming months. Because what you might notice is that it drops down. Maybe nothing changes. But what if you see another spike and another spike and another? You can start to see the labor market dwindle in that case. And again, as much as the Fed has mentioned their job, they've mentioned their goal, they say, hey, we are trying to accomplish 2% inflation with maximum employment. They always talk about that. They have to see the labor market slowing down. If the labor market doesn't slow down, that means businesses are doing fine and businesses cannot be doing fine for prices to diminish because they eventually have to slash their prices. And so we need to see stuff like this happening, believe it or not. Now that's not the politically correct thing to say. Jerome Powell would never say that, nor would any store, sort of political figure. Unemployment has to spike. We have to see people out of work. We have to see people struggling a little bit in order for inflation to get back to 2%. So I'm keeping my eye on this. I'll keep you guys updated through future YouTube videos. As always, guys, click that like button and comment down below what you learned or what you think is currently happening. Right now, we're at a very interesting time because we don't know. Maybe this will. This is just one anomaly. It was just one bad report. And maybe it's just one time that this is going to happen. But there's a second hand. This might be the start. The start of the labor market slowing down and the start of eventually the labor market collapsing and we having to go back into a time of pause in terms of rate hikes and eventually quantitative easing, which would be reducing rates, which as you guys know, I'm forecasting will start in 2024. Hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll see you guys on the next one.